Hi there, this is Noah with Automus. In this video, we're looking at an automated way to schedule the startup and shutdown of our Azure virtual machines so we can save money on our subscription costs. The problem is a familiar one to all of us who use virtual machines in Azure, namely the fact that VMs incur costs every minute they're turned on. But what about the times when you don't want the VMs to be on? Maybe we're not using them, maybe it's just a lab or a development system or for whatever other reason, we wish they were shut down and not incurring charges. But maybe we have a lot of machines and we don't wanna go through the tedious process where we forget to actually go shut them down overnight or on the weekends and so on. What we really want, of course, is just an easy way to automate this process so that our virtual machines get turned off at a certain time and then they get turned back on at a certain time. So we can say from 10 p.m to 6 a.m., I want my machines to be off, and then by the time I get to the office in the morning, they're gonna be back on again. Unfortunately, Azure doesn't come out of the box with any specific functionality to do this for us, but it does give us some tools that we can use to achieve it. So the diagram we're looking at here is an Azure subscription, which has uh, several VMs set up in different resource groups, one and two, and each of these resource groups is tagged, as you can see, with a schedule. One of them says Saturday and Sunday. The other says 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And what that represents is the shutdown schedule. So that resource group one is saying that I want all my VMs to be shut down all weekend. And resource group two is saying I want all my VMs to be shut down just overnight, but not on the weekends. They'll be on during the day. And what actually does that for us is the Azure Automation Runbook that runs every hour, goes out and checks all the tags in the subscription and says, if any of you resource groups are tagged right now to be shut down, I'm gonna shut you down. And if you're tagged to be started, started back up, I'm gonna start you back up. Let's see what this looks like in practice in the Azure portal. We're here in my Azure portal and what we're gonna look at is that we have two resource groups, two sets of virtual machines, and each of them is being treated differently by the scheduling for power shutdown. Um, first of all, I'll just show you, if I go into my resource groups under everything, you can see it's a little confusing and cluttered, but the first one I have is this one on top. And if you look over on the right, we can see that I have six virtual machines in here. And if I look on the tags, this little icon in the upper right, I bring it up, it says no tags. So there's nothing tagged on here. That means there actually is no schedule defined for this group. So no, nothing will happen to this group. No shutdown, no startup. On the other hand, I have another resource group, VM resource group one. And this one is, let's just say it's my dev machine. And I have just one virtual machine in here called VM two. If I look at the tags for this one, I should see I have something called auto shutdown schedule and it says Tuesday. So that means that all day Tuesday, this VM should be shut down for whatever reason. And then if it's not Tuesday, we want it to be turned back on again. So let's look at how that actually happens. The way that works is there's a run book that runs in an Azure automation account. And if I look in my accounts, I'll see I have two of them in here, I have a runbook, and this is what we have implemented to do this. It's called assert auto shutdown schedule. If we open this runbook up, we can see what it has is a schedule itself. And that schedule is to run every hour. And that's as frequent as you can run a runbook in Azure, at least at the time of this recording. Uh, so it runs every hour on the hour, and it goes out and checks all the tags, as I said, on all the resource groups and says, given the current time at 9 p.m. or whatever it happens to be, is any of these resource groups marked to be shut down at this time or are any of them marked not to be shut down, which implies that they need to be started up? And, and so it'll take that action depending on what the state of any virtual machines inside those groups is at the time. So if we look at the job history of this particular runbook, we can see that it has been running uh, steadily and every hour you can see a little um, 
a record for a job it has run. And if we look in any one of these, you probably see most of the time that there's not much action. I can open up any of the outputs to see what happened. We can see the run book starts, it checks. It notices that it is Tuesday for this particular resource group. Um, but it checks that the state is off, and it already is off, so it doesn't take any action. And so that's what happens most of the time for any given uh, one of these. But when the transition happens between a time that the machine should be shut down and the time it should not be shut down, that's when we see something happen. So if we look at this particular time, we can see it again. It came back. It saw, okay, I've got a resource group. It has a schedule saying Tuesday. I'm checking the schedules now. Uh, but it actually just uh, rolled over into Wednesday at this particular time, just uh, at the beginning of this hour. So it says, oh, look at this. I have a VM that needs to be started now. So it notices that VM2 was offline, and it goes ahead and starts it to conform to the schedule. So at this point, that VM is running again. And you know, until next Tuesday, it'll stay on until Tuesday rolls around, and then this, this run book will run and say, oh, it's Tuesday again, I'm shutting it back down. Uh, so there's not really much to demo in the sense that this is really invisible to you. Um, you set this up, the run book runs every hour until infinity, and uh, it just does whatever the tags tell it to do. So that wraps up the demo portion. If you actually want to get this working in your environment, in your subscription in Azure, we're going to go through now the setup process to get this runbook imported and all of the other configuration things that have to happen for this to get started. Um, we're going to cover the automation accounts, the runbook import and the module import, the asset configurations, the scheduling of the runbook itself, and then creating the schedule tags that I pointed out. So all of this is actually documented on the page where you're watching the video, but um, we're going to cover it here in the video as well, just in case it helps follow along better. To start, we need to download the runbook and the associated files, and that comes from the automation library page where you're watching this video or linked to the video that you're watching. You can hit the free download button here, and if you're registered, you'll be able to get the download. If you're not, go ahead and register, and that's a free download that'll come down right away. And once the download completes, we can go ahead and open it up and take a look. The three things you should see are the runbook itself, which is the PS1 file. And we should also see two zip files, an azure.zip and an azure resource manager.zip. These are modules that we'll talk about later. First thing you'll do is just extract these to the folder that you want to use, temporary location. And with that, we can head over to the Azure portal. I'm in the legacy or generation one portal in Azure, and I've gone and found my automation section. Now, the first thing I'll need to do if I haven't already is to create an automation account. If you already have one, you could potentially use it, although there is one gotcha that I'll point out. Let's just go ahead and create a new one for our purposes. You can give it any name you like that's unique in your subscription, and you can choose one of the available regions. It doesn't really matter where this account lives. It's only used to store runbooks and the other asset information for you. So with that, you can see it's already created. And if we open it up, we can see that the first thing we need to do is to look at our modules. And in a default automation account, we have modules that come with it. Uh, you can see them here. The one that we want to check, first of all, is the Azure module. What we want to check about it is the version. We want to see version 0.9.1. If you look in your Azure module and you see a different version of that, you're going to want to replace this with the downloaded Azure module to make sure that both the Azure and Azure resource modules match. If this is already 0.9.1, we can skip that step. So. I just mentioned the Azure Resource module. That's the module we want to import. So if you hit this Import Module button and browse, we should be able to find our file that's Azure Resource Manager.zip. Open that and let it go. It will now save the integration module file, and it'll extract all the activities within there. That'll take a few minutes after the upload completes. If your Azure module is not 0.9.1,
we can run the import again and browse and select the Azure module in this case and import that. Now, since we already have the right version that I want, I'm just gonna skip that step. But just be aware that the module versions of both of these must match for this to work correctly. The next step is to import the runbook. If you go to the runbooks tab of your automation account, you should see a button to import. And again, select the file, this time the PS1 file that represents the runbook itself. And OK that. Now this will import the runbook into a new state. And what we have to do first to allow this to run is to make sure that it's published. So if I see this button appear for editing the runbook that's just been created, I can see that it's in a draft state by default. I encourage you to review the runbook contents to get a sense of how this runbook works. If you're not familiar with PowerShell or PowerShell workflow, it may be a little confusing, but there's a lot of comments that should help explain what each step does. At this point, you don't have to make any changes and once you're comfortable with it, we can go ahead and click the Publish button. And it'll ask you if you want to publish. We say we do. And with that, our runbook is in the published state, ready to be run. Now, if I were to try to start this runbook right away, it's going to ask me for two pieces of information. One is the Azure credential name, which is the username and password used to connect to the subscription which is going to be where our virtual machines are that we want to shut down and start up. We're also asked for the Azure subscription name, which is the name of the subscription where the VMs live. But we don't want to enter these values because we're not going to actually run this runbook ourselves. It's going to run on a schedule, and it's going to run in without our input. It's just going to be set and forget. So what we can do is to store these values as assets in our account. In order to store the credential, I'm going to need a user account to put in that credential. So first thing let's do is go out to our Active Directory in our subscription. And there, we should find a directory that's configured for the subscription, and we can put users in here. The best practice for credentials is to use um, an Azure Active Directory user account. And I've created one that is essentially a service account on my subscription that I've called automation user. And this is just a standard Active Directory user in Azure with a username, first name, last name, and a password that I've set up. You can see the username is here and it has that suffix of the um, Azure Active Directory domain. If I grab that username, that's what I'm gonna use to put in my credential. So if I go back over to my automation account, go into automation two and assets, here is where I can add a setting, which is a credential. We're asked for credential type, that's gonna be a credential as opposed to a certificate. And for name, I wanna use a specific name that the runbook expects by default. I've listed that name in the instructions for implementation. If you go back to the page where you downloaded, and you scroll down to the section where it talks about creating a credential asset, you'll see that it indicates that you should give a credential the name default automation credential. So let's just select that and paste that in over here as the name. And then now we put in our username and password. So that's the username that I saw earlier. And then we enter the password that we set. Save that. So that's the credential. The next step is we need to save the subscription name. And the subscription name is available to us in the settings section under subscription. So we know that this is right here, the literal subscription name that we want to connect to. Back in the automation account, again, we go to assets. And this time, we're going to add a variable. And the variable is just going to be a string. And the name of it, once again, we want it to be a specific name, and that's uh, called out right here, default Azure subscription. So let's take that and put that as the name. And then the value of it is going to be that specific value that we saw for the subscription name. No need to encrypt. We'll go ahead and save that. With those configured, we're ready to set the schedule tags on our resource groups. So we have to do that in the new preview portal for Azure. We can browse to find our resource group list. And that's right here. 
I have a resource group that I set up called Dev Test Resources, and this is going to contain everything that I want to shut down during, say, non-business hours. So to open that up, I can find that I have one virtual machine in this group. It's called Test VM1. To create this scheduled tag, we hit the tags icon, and the key needs to be auto shutdown schedule. And the value is going to be the times that we want the VMs in this group to be shut down. So in my case, I decided that UTC, I want it to be 10 p.m. to 6 a.m., also Saturday and Sunday. So we save that, and now our tag is in place. With the schedule in place, we can test the runbook to see if it works. So coming back to Browse, we'll find our Automation Accounts section, and then we'll find the account that we set up and the runbook within it. Opening that up, we can hit the start button to manually start it. And because we use the default credential asset name and variable name, we can go ahead and just leave this as default and click OK, and that will run. You'll see it queue up first, then it should go into a status of starting, and then it should finally run. The output, you'll see in the output view under the status section here, and also more information possibly can show up under the streams view, which contains both the outputs and any errors or warnings that might occur. Now that the job is running, we can open the output view. And now that the runbook is completed, we can see that everything worked correctly. Number one, the runbook started successfully. We also found a resource group with a tag that we had set. It has the value of our schedule right there. It checks the schedule and finds that Today being Sunday, this falls within one of the scheduled days for shutdown. And then it goes out and looks for all the virtual machines in the resource group and sees that there is a resource group machine that is not in the correct power state given the current time. So it goes ahead and shuts it down. And then now all VMs configured uh, for their power state to be shut down are in fact shut down, and that completes the runbook. It's also worth checking the streams just to make sure that nothing went wrong that wasn't reported in the output. So if we come into the streams view, we should see that the same messages are shown here line by line. But if you had any problems like an invalid password or something else, you'd see errors uh, show up here. And with our runbook confirmed working, the last step of this process is to set it up so that it runs every hour and does exactly what we just did, but we can set it and forget it. So let's close down. Uh, back out and go to our runbooks view again. And you can see there's a schedules section here that has zero schedules defined. What we want to do is create a new schedule and make this runbook run on the hour every hour. So we can add a schedule and it's going to say uh, configure uh, link a schedule to your runbook and we can create a new one. I'm going to give our new schedule the name hourly runbook schedule and I'm going to have it start on the hour. So what I want to do is the next hour that's coming around I'm going to go ahead and set that as the time that the runbook's going to run for the first time on the schedule. We're going to set the recurrence to hourly every hour, and we're saying it's never going to expire. It's going to always do this. So creating that, we now have a schedule that the runbook is set up to run on. And you can see the schedule is showing up here. So in the future, we'll see that every hour there's going to be a job that automatically kicks off on that hourly recurrence, and a, re a job will appear here, and all of the details about what happened in that job are going to be in the output in the streams as we just saw. That's it for the setup. If you have any problems with this, go ahead and leave a comment on the page or contact me directly, and we'll sort it out. Thanks for listening.